Jojo met Bob. Jojo I built Jody. Define your genetic structure. Pick your fur type. Choose your fur style. Pick your main color. Choose your detail color. That will work. Adventure is in the air, despite the heat from the ground below, where ashes of fire wait to be woke. Oh no, they got you! Reeled in and off to a bad start! Tribes are out for scronky scrap. Your whiff blimp is up next. A tribe tug of war now. I bet you can give it just that. Your melee super wushu is ready to go. Everything to bits. The tribes caught a fluffy hulk. Better watch out, it's no pet. Everything to this. I knew it. They couldn't shut me down. Black Hulk's on the loose. Wushu is ready to go. That emergency kit is from the old days when you needed to pack a punch to survive. Wow, bet that knock makes a tight fist. Like this, still carry echoes from the past. Mm -hmm. Chugga, chugga, chugga. Choo choo! Big ones fall harder. The chug yard, where they parked the choo-choos and fueled them up. <laughs> it's one of the few places that's aged well. It used to look like a dump. It's easy to walk the line when your karma is in balance. Spilled liquid soap is always a slippery slope. Who'd expect that? 
a bubble wobble big enough to go bang. A tribe flip flonker will throw you in at the deep end given the chance. This box once tailed a chugger chugger. Now it's just off track. Tribes always scaving. Big and bad. Bunch of bunk, who's ram banging the door? This is your chance. Long Super Wushu is all wound up. is the limit. Now, let's take this back to Earth. Wow, you really took that all the way down to the end, in flames. It's a wonder some of these up and down still work. Guess they built machines better in the past. I need to brush up on my Wando, but I think he says he's surprised the tribe got a sprocket off ground. I have a feeling he believes it was you that caused the bang at the yard. Not sure he's happy about that. Anyways, he says you owe him one, and he has something in mind. He's almost done with his latest creation, a Mecton. He just needs a little more scrap to get all the pieces fixed stuck. Why, why not talk? Please, don't ask him too many questions. Wando is an old language, and the last time I heard it was in the old village. I think he likes you. From what I can tell, he wants to strike a deal. He also says you owe him one. He can't leave his underyard, so if you help him salvage the scrap he needs from an old skronk just outside, he'll let you take the Mecton for a ride into the dead zone. They're short of breath and death to this zone. Better take care. He who half breathes, half lives. For those that work metal, scrap from mech skronks like this are heavyweight.
There are only a few reasons our world is dying, and all of them could have been avoided. The muck pups are sly, patiently waiting for prey to meet the dead oil service. The grease monkey's mechton is built sturdy, just like himself. Can you imagine how this place used to look before the dead oil flood? In the old world, roads like this really led somewhere. Now, most of them lead to disaster. about this, it goes all the way down to the stump. Start like a snack and you end with a ride down the intestinal canal. That's too close to the end station. Then we up in the wind will be swept out the bowels. Look at it. From this point on, there's no way forward but going back in. Station. Better move on, up and away, or we'll be swept out the bowel way. What you see? It's what's on the inside that counts. That meaty Taurus is already off beat. End it! The Taurus is pumping at half a beat. You know that to move. As one plague ends, hope for a new beginning lives on. The tree of life still stands, with the fate of the world in your hands. Question is, will you continue to defend it, or end it? Guess we'll just have to wait to find out. Choose your gender. Define your genetic structure.
Pick your fur. Choose your fur style. Pick your main color. Choose your detail color. Good choice. Adventure is in the air. Despite the toxic smog hidden beneath the twigs and branches below. Oh no, they got you! Reeled in and off to a bad start. Tribes are out for scronky scrap. Your whiffling is up next. A tribe tug of war there. Bet you can do just that. The tribes caught a fluffy hulk. Better watch out, it's no pet. A big barrel bull. Made that, I knew it. They couldn't be shot. One hulk is the loose. Wushu is ready to go. That emergency kit is from the old days when you needed to pack a punch to survive. Wow, bet that knock makes a tight fist. Things like this still carry echoes from the past. Made that one dead. The chug yard, where they parked the choo choos and fueled them up. It's one of the few places that's aged well. It used to look like a dump. It's easy to walk the line when your karma is in balance. Spilled liquid soap is always a slippery slope. Who'd expect that? A bubble bobble big enough to go bang. A tried flip flonker will throw you in at the deep end given the chance. This box once tailed a chugger chugger. Now it's just off track. Tribes always scavenging for scrap, but they should have stuck to looting instead of playing around. Bonkers, 
busy round banging the door. This is your business. Blows up in your face. Yes, you can do anything. Only the sky is the limit. Now, let's take this back to Earth. Wow, you really took that all the way down to the end. In flames. It's a wonder some of these up and down still work. Guess they built machines better in the past. All the ball of Gizmo. I need to brush up on my Wando, but I think he says he's surprised the tribe got a sprocket off ground. I have a feeling he believes it was you that caused the bang at the yard. Not sure he's happy about that. Anyways, he says you owe him one, and he has something in mind. He's almost done with his latest creation, a Mechdon. He just needs a little more scrap to get all the pieces fixed stuck. Why, why, not talk? Please, don't ask him too many questions. Wando is an old language, and the last time I heard it was in the old village. Popong, Pippi Lou? I think he likes you. From what I can tell, he wants to strike a deal. He also says you owe him one. Popong, Pippi Lou? He can't leave his underyard, so if you help him salvage the scrap he needs from an old skronk just outside, he'll let you take the Mechdon for a ride into the dead zone. They're short of breath and death to this zone. Better take care. He who half breathes, half lives. For those that work metal, scrap from mech scronks like this are heavyweight. There are only a few reasons our world is dying, and all of them could have been avoided. The muck pumps are the slime, patiently waiting for prey to eat the dead oil surface. The grease monkey's mechdon is built sturdy, just like himself. Can you imagine how this place used to look before the dead oil flood? In the old world, roads like this really led somewhere. Now, most of them lead to disaster. Ooh. That's a trick. 
jumbo tough with an apple. Keep no fast, better put an end to it before it ends our world. Can't take much more. It's time for an electric performance. Feeling about this goes all the way down to the stomach. Start like a snack and you end with a ride down the intestinal canal. That's too close to the end station. Then underway. That game is called Biomutant for a reason. Because you'll be able to m uh, mutate your character. Oh, so, so you're getting new feats, new perks, new arm. Something like that? Crab pinchers on your back, oh. new huge mutated tail. Uh, but we also have what I call X Men mutations. So what? you're able to levitate, telekinize people, and shoot rays from your eyes. Do you have claws? You can. Uh, oh! Whoa. <laughs> I'm hyped for that. <laughs> so where does the environment, where does this take place? Yeah, so our take on post-apocalyptic, we don't have a nuclear bomb disaster. So it's more about uh, the environment uh, and a catastrophe in the environment, so a natural environment disaster. We have something called dead oil uh, emerging from uh, the Earth's core, seeping through the crust of the Earth and okay. contaminating the world. So in our version of this, there's uh, the game on the open world is scented by the tree of life that is currently dying. Ah, and you have the choice to try to heal it or not. Otherwise, the game will end with the world dying anyways. But you might want to play like that. Okay, we'll see the customization of the, of the character right now. You can do whatever <laughs> what? you want yeah. with this. Oh, so it's a, holy. my goodness. It's an RPG, right? You saw the stats on the right-hand side. Uh -huh. So as you change your genetic structure, it also affects the stats. So you want to play as a big character, uh, you get more health, you're more resilient, but maybe a little bit slower. If you really want to be small, fast and agile, uh -huh. yeah, that will also, also affect your stats. Okay, so how long is the gameplay plan for? Ooh, it's a tricky question, it's an open world game. Uh -huh. So let me give like the political answer of at least 10 hours. Okay. okay. But it's probably going to be longer. So, um, is there like a main boss in the game? I'm sure it is, and he's big and mutated and has like eight arms and so on. Yeah, I mean, the main bosses, if you will, you want to call them like that, is at the end of each of the five routes, mm -hmm. emerging, stretching out of the world from the Tree of Life, there's this big creature, 
gnawing at that root. I, I see some influence from comic books, like with the raw, yeah. right? It's, <laughs> it's very comic book-like. It's just, again, we're showing you the free flow here. So uh -huh. you see the we're just using the face buttons. So in a normal like third-person shooter, you're usually using the trigger and you're aiming. So mm -hmm. we're trying to get this free flow by jumping and shooting, immediately switching to melee, uh, dodging, rolling and shooting, and immediately switching to melee. So it's really up to you how you use this uh, creative toolbox of kung fu moves. Mm -hmm. And obviously, as you progress through the game, you will be able to learn more moves, both by, you know, getting a level up points and assigning them and unlocking moves, but also you will meet the Kung Fu masters uh, so out in the world. I'm really curious about your main character. Like, who is this? Like, I am just so curious. Like, how, can you tell us a little bit more about our, uh, you know, yeah, protagonist? Yeah, without, <laughs> without revealing too much, uh, so... At the beginning of the game, you don't really know anything about who you are. And Ooh, then okay. I kind of like that. So yeah. it's a self-discovery. Yeah, and there's a couple of things that will play into your personal end game, because that's what we want to try to do. And it's not like we have three cutscenes and you get the red or blue one. But we're going to do a, try to do a personalized ending. But I want to go back to your question. So in this world, there's only one meat eater. You saw that big bad wolf yes. in the beginning. He's the single meat eater in the game. So everyone uh -huh. else, they are mammals, so they eat fruits and uh, vegetables. And this might sound silly, but it actually has a meaning in the game. So this uh, wolf, he will be a re reoccurring character in the game. You will meet him several times. And at the end, you will also start finding out who you are and why you are here. And also a little bit about your background, where you came from. Okay, so uh, that's And I can't list. mention more. No, no, no spoilers. I know spoilers. This is just my job. I got to ask you questions. Well, and the people in the chat want to know. And there's a lot of components to that. We have a storyteller. So the only speaking character in the game is the storyteller. Oh. And all of the other ones, they are mutated animals. So mm -hmm. they speak mumbo yumbo. And he interprets okay. what they are saying. Mutant jumbo. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's actually awesome. Wait, what is that? What is, is he like? Is he like per Whoa. Yeah, he's shooting electrical bullets there, and you will see the effect of that there when they're shaking the teeth. And uh, this big guy is actually quite dangerous. So when you see oil in our game, it's always dangerous. So this guy is actually going to try to grab you and drown you in that oil over there. So you better be careful. He? he looks like a very <laughs> huge squirrel or like an ape. I mean, he looks like all you know fuzzy and cute for the most part, but then you look at his face and. Not Alfred. Yeah, he has covered his face because he was emerging from the oil, so you can see a little bit of the gear there. Oh, uh, wow. He's, a, he's like a scuba driver. <laughs> oh, look at him. All right. well, the game is, um, cool. I'm assuming it's for PC, but uh, also probably some consoles. It's primarily on, on console, so oh. PS4, oh, right. Xbox oh. uh, okay. One, and also on PC, yes. All right, awesome. What's the plan for the release date? Next year. Wow. Okay. So, so very soon. How far are you in development of the game? Yeah, I mean, we're in a pretty good state. We will end with a little bit of a uh, glimpse of the open world, because this is m mainly showing parts of the, the demo that is playable here at Gamescom. Uh, so we are quite far, I would say, but there's always, you know, in game development, a lot of things we want to do. Sure. So we just have to gorge, right. like, how much of the crazy ideas we have, we actually put in the game. And by crazy ideas, you will see at the end a little bit about what I mean by that. Because <laughs> uh, a lot of people have, uh, you know, they, they're actually agreeing with us when we say the game is weird in a good way. Uh, I, I like the style. It's like I a love comic the style. book. A moving comic book, basically, right? The, the, uh, the graphics are complementing that as well. So that's really cool to see. Uh, when it comes to the main character, right? Pow. I, I see. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I mean, uh, when a I game see made that. For you. Uh, anytime I see Val, I have to just. I mean, that's cool. I like the comic book little sequences popping out the bubbles. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. So what I wanted to ask is the main character has a sword, right? Is it like his personal like, you know, weapon or can you change that? You have different we weapons. Yeah, it's funny that you ask that right now because when you enter that door, you will see a little bit of our crafting. And for the demo, we actually uh, ask you to use a crafting bench. But in the real game, you can craft at any point. So you start out with this sword, but you can create and we will see an example of this, really uh, a creative way of customizing any melee weapon. So two-handed, two single-handed, so you will cool. read. And you can put a lot of stuff on this. And one thing you can do is put uh, modules onto these weapons mm -hmm. that will give them like frost powers or biocontaminated powers that if you hit an enemy with that, you will start to bark. Uh, that's, that's really awesome. Like everyone loves customization options, right? Yeah. So oh, this yeah. is like... So same thing goes for the range, what he just did there. It's like, 
a body that dictates if it is a shotgun type of gun or assault uh -huh. rifle type of gun. You can also dual wield, uh, one two-handed, and obviously he wears the stuff that you just crafted. Mm -hmm. And then again, when you go out into combat, you're free to mix and match those. So here's actually it's an example of that module. So he's picking up a frost module here. And this example, you see it's actually mounted to the gun. Mm -hmm. But yeah. you can at any point choose to mount it on a melee weapon instead. Uh, you can craft these, you can craft bigger ones. So it's a tactical choice and a decision to your creative toolbox for combat and engaging enemies. Okay. And what are these insects that's following? <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry, I, no, I am very great. distracted by it's these uh, really cute little things, but maybe not cute? I don't know. What is that? Yeah, he's your, he's your main sidekick in the game, oh, in the open world game. No way. So in the demo, he's, he doesn't play a major role here in the playable demo, but in the real game, he has a significant role. So he's your automaton scrap toy. Uh, that will follow you through the game. He speaks a little bit of blip block. Uh, sometimes the narrator will actually tell you what he's saying too. And as you find cool places in the world, he might start to tell you about them and to give quests uh, in relation to where you are in the world. Does okay. he actually help you in any combat situations? He That's says, not his job. Okay, but I'm just making sure because I oh, freak out. I'm like, get out of the way! I'm trying to do something. Yeah, sometimes Don't die, you have little to guy. Uh, like characters like this. This yeah. is a key character. You have to help and defend them. All right. But I will give you one thing with the cricket. You can actually modify it. I didn't say this <laughs> no before. Way, right. Yeah, so you can actually change the way that it looks. So you can make a. Uh, yeah. <laughs> was that one of the goals? Was to make sure that things were, you know, that the player could feel really in control and yeah. modify things. I love video games. But I think like when I want a linear story, I love going to the movies. But video games really want to go back and make, just bring the fun factor into our game. So we don't take ourselves too serious, but we just focus on uh, enabling the player to do cool shit. Well, that's actually pretty cool. I mean, when I'm playing an RPG, I'm spending like an hour or two hours on creating my character, oh, 100%. right? And this game is basically like, you know what? We love that as well, and we're gonna just make an entire game about that. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty cool because you can switch around like whatever you want during the game, right? The, yeah. the, the customization options are crazy. I like that. Or the weapons. I mean, I'm assuming you have hundreds of combinations. I we'll think we did a math calc on the ranged weapon combination. It's about half a million. Oh my god. What? Yeah. And are you going to be adding more? Or is this just something... I think half a million is enough. If they all make yeah, sense, I, I leave so. it to the player. Uh, oh, here's a good thing. You oh. see that? That's glitter grass. Okay. And uh, these small critters called nonos, they're hiding in glitter grass that you find in the open world. Mm -hmm. And they are essentially uh, for healing the roots of the tree of life. So you can actually then affect your personal ending by healing the Tree of Life. Here's an example that this old guy gives you on how it will work on its miniature pensai plant. <laughs> but it's for the huge tree in the open world. So if you lead Nonos to heal the root, then your chance of world survivor, a percentage score, actually increases. And at okay. the end of the game, we will roll that. So if you have 30%, you have a third of a chance to get that ending. But you can heal it up to 100%, and then you're sure you're going to get that world survival ending. So or if you want to play as bad, mm -hmm. you don't have to do that. Then okay. you will have the really bad ending. So you're crafting your own destiny, basically. That's a good way of saying it. Maybe I'll use that. Yes. <laughs> Trademark that quick. <laughs> yeah, so here we are actually seeing, like, coming towards the end of the playable demo. So it's about 25 minutes in. And I would say that this marks the start of the actual game. So we're opening it up, a uh, four by four kilometer open world for you to discover. Mm -hmm. So what is this world here oh, called? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, we don't have a name for it. Okay. Uh, but it's quite varied, and there's a lot of characters in it. So Whoa. here we'll give you a glimpse of what you were doing most of the time. That was Cerberus, exactly. though. He had three heads. That was insane. That <laughs> was really good. So that is an example of a boss. <laughs> Ooh.